Greetings, welcome to TFI, and this video that you found is called How to Copy Design Straight to the Point Edition. The reason for that is that up in the top right I have linked the video called How to Copy Design Run Edition, displaying the same information but with a bit of personality injected into it. And if you don't like that kind of thing and you just like straight to the point free education, then this is the one for you, sir. So, copy design. When you right click in Vault 2018 and then you initiate a copy design, you get this dialog box here, which has been in the product since Vault 2015 R2, I'll have you know. And it's an absolute clusterfuck. So with copy design, what you do is you take the top level, right? And then you want to create a new copy of it because the whole point of copy design is to create a new assembly or drawing and then reuse the majority of that existing assembly, but create a new design and then create possibly new copies of bits underneath it. So what you do is you right click on the top level and to create the copy, you select copy, right? That will give you a new copy of this top level assembly. Its name at the moment will be copy of GTX 970. So if we were to just click go right now, we will get a new assembly called copy of GTX 970.iam, which is undesirable. You want to give it a new name. How do you do that? Well, like most of Autodesk's products at the moment, the feedback is dreadful. It's not immediately obvious how to do that. So to give this a new name, obviously, I don't know how you didn't figure this out. Duh. <laughs> you got to click the, fi the five rectangles and an underscore at the bottom. Click that. And then you get this numbering box here. And then you've got old name, new name, prefix, and base name. So, so if you don't want a prefix, because let's face it, nobody does, select the prefix cell and then just delete that out with the delete key. Base name, you can now select and then type in a new name. Let's call this GTX 1070. And then click out of it. Your new assembly will be called GTX 1070.iam. Now, the next thing you need to know is where to put the damn thing. And again, that's something which is terribly fed back to you in the product because there's just nothing on screen right now that to indicate where it's going to go. So the best thing to do, right, and, and just for your information, this little cell here is the path where it is going to go, is you've got to right click and select copy to. You don't have to click on that. You can click anywhere. Right click, copy to, and then you can browse in your vault. These are your vault folders. Create a new folder. We'll call this GTX 1070. Click OK on that. And then that should now change to GTX 1070. Just by the way, that's called a has destination path, which is not a standard vault property. It's just something randomly made up for this copy design tool. All right. If you want visual validation, you can right click on the column headers, go to choose columns, and then you can scroll down to destination path, destination something or other. There it is. Uh, copy design destination path. Out there. Right. Uh, left click on that, drag it, and then put it in. <laughs> obviously i mean that, that 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 should have been obvious but there you go there's your destination path okay the rest of the parts you just rinse and repeat so if you want a new for example i don't know usb header right click on that go to copy right click again copy to put it in that folder that should feed back in this cell here where it's going to go select the numbering go to usb header again remove the prefix and then you can type in i don't know like new whatever you're going to put it as and that's your new file which will be copied into this location here if you're using if you're using a numbering scheme with vault like automatic part numbering that's when things get a little bit more awkward in order to really haven't done themselves any favors here either even though your numbering scheme is already enabled what i mean by that is in inventor when you hit save your numbering scheme is active and it is issuing numbers it's not immediately by default enabled in copy design for reasons that are completely unknown to me or anyone else. What you've got to do is drop this little V button down here, go to numbering schemes, and then tick shown on the TF, well, whichever part numbering scheme it is you want to use with copy design. Click OK. And then when you do now copy a part, you've now got to go to this tab here, which is your part numbering scheme. That became active when we did the drop down numbering schemes and then click shown. Select that. And then, again, for reasons that are a total mystery, you've got to left click and drag this into here, right? You can, on the non tab, you can right click on it and say change scheme to your numbering scheme as well. That will do it as well. And then they will now receive a new part number. But the major, major, massive Achilles heel here it is a complete flop from Autodesk, is that it is not going to tell you what the part number is, which is understandable because it hasn't generated it yet. It doesn't generate the part number until you click go, which is that big blue arrow there. But even then, after it's done the copy, it doesn't tell you what the part number is. It's just going to dump it in this folder here, 
and then you've got to go and find it and try and guess what part number it's give you, which is a complete nightmare, and I'll show you that in a second. But for this one here, we need to also copy that to the 1070 folder. Okay, the other thing which you can pay attention to if you want is the action rules in the new copy design. If you select this little drop down here and go to action rules, I've already made one there for the other video, I'll delete that. You've got by default, a default rule set. When you hit edit on that, this is a default rule set which takes care of your part number. So this is like a condition based rule if the well not if but when the property called file name right which is every file's got one contains star which is anything so basically so if the file name contains any text then part number will be set as the file name which means that whenever you do a copy design your part number will always be the same as the file name that is the default rule set uh, and as far as I know, can you change this? No, you can't change the default rule set. You've got to create a copy of it if you want to make your own rule set. So let's call this TFI rules. Hit edit on that. That gives us the part number value. So that part number is taken care of. But then if you want to, I can't at the moment think of any examples of when you would want to change this, but there will be specific use cases where you would. You can now say, right, okay, for example, in addition to the part number, if my description contains something like you know fabrication hit add if the de if the description contains fabrication then do something with another property you know make the material uh or reset the material set it as and th and then whatever you, you know you can you can do that with as many properties with as many conditions as you want once that's done click ok click apply click ok and then you can drop this button down here and then use your new rule set instead of the default rule set if you want to you can do that as well okay that's pretty much it once it's done we've created a copy well haven't done yet but we're going to create a copy of the top level assembly everything in bold is going to create a new file the rest of the files they're going to be reused from the old assembly and then <laughs> What you then do is you click go. Before I do that, I'll just give you a very quick overview of the other other buttons that are in here. This one down here is where used. This allows you to pick part and, and query where it's used. That's standard vault functionality, but it's quite useful. If you do create a copy of this, you can query where it's used. So you might want to create a copy of the parents. Uh, this thing here is called actions. Again, this makes no sense at all. It's very clunky and it's, it's just weird. It's weird. It's useful. It's just visually displayed in a weird way. But this is an overview of what's being copied. Copy. What's being reused. All of these being reused. And if anything was being swapped out, so say, for example, standoff pin, if you wanted to replace that with, I don't know, something else, a different kind of pin, you can select replace, browse your vault, and then swap that part out with another part, and that'll appear in the replace column there. Numbering, we've been over that. That doesn't make any sense, but it kind of kind of works in a clunky, strange, unique kind of a way. And then folders, this is uh, it's pretty much confirmation of what you're going to end up with. The GTX 970 folder, these are the files that are going to be kept in the 970 folder. And then we're going to get a GTX 1070 folder with the new top level. And then these new two parts here that are going to get part numbers that at the moment we don't know what they're going to be. So then you hit go. That's now going to create your copy design. It's going to create GTX 1070, and it's going to create these two parts here. But what I was saying earlier is that it still, right now, hasn't told us what our part numbers are. You can click in here, you can press F5. It's just, it just doesn't tell you. You've now got to go to the folder, that one there, that it's put these files in, and find it. <laughs> or you can click the top level, I suppose, and then do way, and do uses and look at what new part numbers are in there. But it's just really clunky. If this folder here contained... 40,000 parts these two files with part numbers that you don't know is now mixed in with a folder with 40,000 files in which makes them very difficult to find you've now got to add columns and reorder columns look for files that have just been created and it's just it's an unnecessary hassle which Autodesk have made it it's a complete oversight it has to be this isn't if it's by design then it's terrible design but that's pretty much it close copy design Go to your 1070 folder, there's your new top level assembly, there's your two new parts which turned out to be part number 7 and 8. Click uses and you can see now that the GTX 1070 assembly now reuses most of the parts but we've now got these two new parts in from the copy design. So that's it, that's how you use the new copy design, straight to the point edition. Uh, and if you, do, if you do just out of interest want to go see the rant edition, 
then uh, that video is linked in the card up at the top right of the screen. Thank you very much. If you like these kind of videos, hit like. If you thought this video was full of crap and it wasn't much good for you and it didn't help you, then press the dislike button. Do not press the dislike button if the video was just completely irrelevant to you. That's not what it's there for. And if you enjoy this and you're getting lots and lots and lots of career benefits from TFI, by all means, optionally, head on over to the Patreon page and do help out over there, I do these things in my spare time after my day job. Uh, so any help is much appreciated. Thank you very much, sir. And I'll see you in the next video. Toodles.